What's going on YouTube? I decided to reach out to my community of fellow content creators, retro gamers, and yeah, just people in general, and ask them one simple question. What is something that is most valuable to you in your collection? Now this wasn't specifically monetary value. This could be sentimental and yeah, whatever you have the biggest connection with that you want is your favorite thing in your collection essentially is what this video is so i like i said i asked fellow content creators uh some people from the super retro force which i'm a part of and some other random people too that i'm sure some of you guys know so make sure at the end of the video when you're done that you go down to the description below and check out these channels um and also yeah you'll see my personal pick at the very end so let's get into it What's going on guys? My name is Rad Bash, and thanks to IO Retro Gamer Dad for having me on this collab. We're supposed to talk about an item in our collection that means a lot to us. So I had to go with my copy of Silent Hill 4, The Room. Now you might be like, ah, it's just Silent Hill 4, why is that so important? So to me, Silent Hill, the copy I have was actually given to me by my fiance back when we first got together. So it was my birthday one year. Uh, I think I was turning 18 or 19, I can't remember. Um, and she didn't have any money to get me anything, so what she did was went through her old games that she had growing up, one of them being Silent Hill 4 and a couple other games, and she gifted them to me. And now that may not seem very, like, important, I guess, um, but to me, it showed me that I found a woman who, one, liked gaming, which, awesome, and two, supported my hobby, because she knew I was a big collector, so hey. Now yes, Silent, the Silent Hill games are a little pricier, so that also kind of is nice. Uh, but I don't know, it just, it means a lot to me because it was the start of me finding somebody who liked me for me, and accepted the nerdy side of me. So, that's what I had to go with. So, I'm curious to see what everybody else picked for this. Iowa, thanks again for having me on, bro. And like always, guys, stay radical. So my fellow Super Retro Force brother, Iowa Retro Gamer Dad, asked me to be a part of this collaboration, and he asked me, what is a piece of my video game collection that really means a lot to me? And there is so many games in my collection that have memories tied to them. But what's important here is to take into account something from the past that still stood the test of time and is still a part of my collection to this day. And that narrows the list down. And I want to think back to when I asked my mother for a certain video game. You see, at the time, my mother wasn't able to get me a lot in terms of video games. There were other things she would get me, like toys and certain collectibles like cards when I was growing up. But video games were kind of forbidden. I didn't really ask her for those because I knew my father would always you know, get me a video game if I ever asked him for one. And I knew how expensive they are, and uh, growing up, you know, we weren't like the richest family in the world. Honestly, if I got maybe four games a year, that was it. And that includes Christmas and my birthday. I was looking for my next JRPG fix because I had just finished Pokemon Gold and Silver the year before, and I played the hell out of it. Yet there was still time until Ruby and Sapphire was gonna come out. So I found a game called Dragon Warrior Monsters 2, Kobe's Journey. And I saw that there were two versions of this game, and I didn't really have the sources to look up those games. However, I did look up some screenshots, and I was like, this looks very interesting. I mean, if you look at the box art for the game, you see the main character here being swamped by a bunch of cool and wacky characters and monsters. And it caught my imagination, and I just had to try it. So I begged my mom, I said, Mom, I want this game so bad, it, it, it's gonna, you know, scratch that itch until I get the next Pokemon game, and she got it for me. You know, it took a little convincing, but she finally got it for me, and I couldn't thank her enough, and I ended up falling in love with this game. It was a tough game because it was my first ever Dragon Warrior slash Dragon Quest game I've ever played, but it was still similar to Pokemon enough where I got the hang of it, I knew what I was doing, I was convincing monsters to join my team, I'm exploring the different worlds, and I had so much fun playing this game. And what makes it really significant for me is not only was it one of the few games that my mother was able to get me growing up, but it was actually the one game that got me into the Dragon Quest series in general. And to this day, 
I hold it in high regard and it's still here in my collection, my original copy. You can see it in this picture here in the background when I was younger. There's the box. I wish I still had that box and manual, but unfortunately I don't anymore. But the most important thing is the game at the end of the day and I still have it. And this is why it holds such a special memory to me in my collection. And I want to thank you once again, Iowa Retro Gamer Dad, for allowing me to be a part of this collaboration. Salute to the Super Retro Force, and I wish you all a good game and good night. So something that has a lot of value, sentimental value for me, I got many stuff in my room, and I will show a B-roll of it. Um, the, the only thing that has really heavy sentimental value for me that I had never been able to, like, get a you know like go take it away or drop it or nothing i even frame it is this magazine over here the final fantasy 12 special edition magazine from electronic gaming monthly and the reason it holds so much value is because my family was poor we even though we my mom tried her best to get us console and she did get us a bunch of consoles over the years and I'm, and, and I'm proud of her because she really worked hard to get all the consoles that we had. It was hard for her to keep up with, with everything. Bills, car, this, that. At the time, she was kind of a single mother. Then my, my stepdad came into the picture. But if you live in Puerto Rico or you have been in Puerto Rico, sometimes it's a struggle to live over there. I, I, I saw myself, we, I saw myself, my, my family saw herself several times not having food for days, <laughs> like one or two days. It was a struggle bus. It was a really struggle bus, how the system worked over there. The thing is that I remember begging my mom because I didn't want her to bother her to buy me a new game or, or a new console or something. So I remember telling my mom, mom, please, please, just buy me the magazines. I was, I was little on that time. Uh, please buy me the magazine. I promise you I will not bother you. I was like 13 or 14, something like that. And, and, and she said, fine, I'm gonna buy it, you know, you know, but I'm gonna buy it because I, I don't want you to be happy. You know, I want you to have something to do. In a magazine, you know, reading and all that stuff. Uh, magazine teach me a lot of English too. I, I used to read a lot of magazines. And I remember going to the mail and getting that one. And I felt it like the luckiest boy in the world. I could not believe it because my cousin got his and he went home and showed it to me and i got mine and i was like oh my god why the magazine is so different from you it makes zero sense and it was it was a, it was an amazing moment so that's that's why and many other stuff that that magazine remind me so much of that times and it holds value like it holds a lot of value for me anyway that was it <laughs> what's up guys pick and preacher here what is my favorite piece in the collection that, that's a collection, if you didn't know. I'm sure most of you watching probably know. Uh, I'm an idiot. So, what is my favorite piece? Now listen, I love Sega... Sega. From Sega Genesis, Sega Saturn, and if any of you follow me or know anything about me, you know I'm kind of addicted to Sega Saturn lately. Now I have all kinds of RPGs, platforms, shooters, shoot 'em ups beat-em-ups, fighter games, and honestly, Sega Saturn is my favorite, but I couldn't play the Sega Saturn games unless if I had a Sega Saturn, of course. Somebody found this at a thrift store for $200, so I naturally purchased it. Now, unfortunately, there's a few little spots, so this isn't my favorite piece, but I do have a favorite piece, and it is this beautiful... <sighs> I'm not gonna open this up right here, but I will put some camera shots, some video shots, whatever you call it, of how clean this is. If you can see it, it is spectacular. And it comes inside, well no, something comes inside, which is the double, I guess you call it the double cardboard tray. The Virtual Fighter jewel case is amazing. The console, all it needed was a battery, and it's beautiful. I absolutely love this. The plastic was still, I mean, it's open, but it was still covering the console and the cables and all of that. So this one is in minty condition. This is what got me back into collecting, was the memory of playing Sega Saturn and how it just kind of died out and I forgot about it for so long and something hit me the first time I saw Sega Saturn games again. Now, one of the reasons that this piece is so special to me, I remember when Sega Saturn came out. My brother went and made sure he got it the day it came out and I remember putting in that dem demo and seeing that 
kind of creepy looking face pop on the screen and saying, you are five years away, away from, from the entering the 21st century. Humankind stands on the edge of the interactive age. You have come a long way. But are you ready for the future? Introducing Sega Saturn. Aww. Hit it. Sega Saturn, complete in the box. The first edition, or what did you call First model one, version one, with the Virtua Fighter inside in the jewel case. If you don't have a Sega Saturn, you guys need to try to get one. So, yes, Iowa Retro Gamer Dad, this by far is my favorite piece in the collection. What's going on, everyone? Thank you so much to my fellow Super Retro Force team member, Iowa Retro Gamer Dad, for having me on for this collab. So, the topic is, what is one thing in your collection that means a lot to you? And it's actually one of my most recent pickups. It is Castlevania Lament of Innocence. Yep. This game right here means a heck of a lot to me. It does. It does. It means so much to me. And here's why I say that. I have so many memories of renting this game back when I was a kid. I used to rent video games to get my experiences with a lot of different games. Because I couldn't afford too many as a kid. So... I would go and I would rent games, and this was one of my most rented games right here. Love this game to death. And the reason why it means so much to me is because this was the game that my dad was actually into. Now, my dad passed away a few years ago. I was super close with him. So the fact that I have uh, not only a game that means a lot to me just from the game itself's perspective... But the fact that it was a game that my dad loved to watch me play, this makes it even more special that I have this. Because now, every time I look at this case, I kind of have a kind of have a memory of him. So, yeah, that is why Castlevania Lament of Innocence is a game that means a lot to me in my collection. Thank you again, Re Iowa Retro Gamer Dad, for having me on for this. I greatly appreciate you, my dude. And I'll see you in the next one, my fellow Belmonts. When it comes to things in the collection, there's a lot that I have that I find, you know, memorable or, like, very important to me. But this one right here is something that I wanted for a very long time. And I did make a promise to myself that if they, if there was a release, a physical release for it, I would get my hands on it. And I'm glad I did. And it's this. This is the King of Fighters 2002 Unlimited match for the PlayStation 4. Now this is the classic edition through that was released through Limited Run because it came in this Neo Geo, you know, style box, which games, at least for the Neo Geo, came in this packaging. And I've always wanted one. And it's it's really cool. I like the style of it. And this was the first time we actually got a physical release of Unlimited Match here because it did come out for PS2 back in Japan, but we never got it here. And you could get it digitally on like PC or Xbox 360 back then, but I wanted a physical copy of this game because 2002 is my first introduction to the franchise and it's also still my top one in the series. So the fact that they released the new version here, I wanted to get my hands on this. And the other thing that makes this unique, besides like the packaging of it coming in this classic box, was the fact that it included improved offline play. So it uses rollback netcode, so that means it's good to play online. But for me, this was an important game for me to own in the collection. I'm glad I have it, and I would never ever want to get rid of it. But I did get more of those. This wasn't the only one that I got. But this one, O2 Unlimited Match is still the best one to me. And this is a true classic and something that is very important for me to have in my collection. With that, I want to give a thank you to Iowa for having me on this video. And I can't wait to see what everyone else brings to the table for this. So thank you so much for this opportunity. What's up everybody, Mysticles here, and big thanks to Iowa Retro Gamer Dad for inviting me on to do this collaboration video. 
So I was put forth with the question, the almighty question that all retro gamer collectors get. What's your favorite thing in your collection? Well, I got a lot of things. I've been collecting for about 14 years now. I'm slowly collecting. I didn't go too ham. And uh, to show you my favorite thing in my collection, I think I got to show you something else first. Take a look at this. So as you're seeing right here, my favorite franchise in gaming is Shinmu, Sega Dreamcast. I remember being there day one of release, 9999. Still to this day, the only console I've ever gotten day one of release. And just a few months later, we received Shinmu on the Dreamcast, and it was a game changer when it comes to games. I couldn't tell you how surprised I was when I played this. Super realistic weather based off the actual weather for the local area in the actual time is depicted in. Everybody having their own schedule following it every day. It was unreal for the time. All the different aspects crammed into this new game. Any one of these aspects broken up by themselves makes an awesome game. And the way they were able to put it together for the first Shinmu was nothing less than a miracle for the time. But that's not my favorite thing. But overall, I would say my favorite thing in the game room is this right here. Original Dimension Cells from a 1999 release trailer of Shinmu. And this was gifted to me by my significant other many years ago. She didn't pay very much for it at the time. I have no idea what it's worth now. But I would love to get it signed by Yu Suzuki one day. And uh, it's been the treasure, you know what I mean, my favorite thing in my game room for a long time now. And that's always going to be coming and going, you know what your favorite thing in the game room at that current time is, but this has been it for a while, and I'm still happy to have it. I've seen some other ones online many years ago for different franchises, but this is the only one I have getting. But thanks again, Iowa Retro Guys, for having me come on here and do this. I really had a good time, and uh, I always like the classic, what's your favorite item you have in your game room. Till next time, I'm Mr. Cleese. Stay safe out there. All right, guys. So thank you so much to everybody that contributed to this video. Um, this one, it's a, you know, over the years, some of the stuff has changed about what my favorite thing in my collection is. Um, I've done a recent podcast in the past about how one of my favorite things that I have in my collection is actually my Nintendo. It uh, is the original one I had from when I was a little boy. So it, it holds a lot of value to me. But today I wanted to do something different because, you know, I've already done that. So, a while back, a subscriber sent me this. It is a Wada copy, a Wada graded Miles Morales on PS4 9.8. Now, some of you are going to say, well, I thought you said it wasn't about money, it wasn't about anything like that in the beginning, but it's not really about that with this. So, my subscriber that sent this, thank you by the way, uh, to him, this game could mean nothing. And to a lot of you guys, this is just another Spider-Man game that you played. It was nothing fancy. It was just a fun game that, you know, Insomniac made. But to me, it brought back me to my childhood. Now, a lot of you know I have a, a younger son. Um, he is just getting into gaming now. He's six years old. And he loves Spider-Man. We played Spider-Man 2 together, Spider-Man 1. And this was kind of his first game that he kind of went off on his own. Um, and I remember him getting, uh, just starting to play the game, getting the hang of the thing, and running into Rhino for the first time. Now, some of you know Rhino is one of the first bosses in this game, and he's kind of hard. He's not too bad, you know, if you're playing on the lower difficulty. But at the time, I didn't know that Anakin actually had this on the middle area for difficulty. And he was struggling, he was struggling, and he told me, you know, the typical, Dad, come help me, Dad, come help me with this boss. And I said, no, you know, just keep working at it, bud. And on his own, he finally defeated Rhino. And the look of joy, the look of, you know, yeah, I did it, I did it, this accomplishment, you know, not holding his hand too much and letting him do it on his own, really hit hard. And it instantly brought me back to when I was younger, and the first time I ran into Bowser in Super Mario Bros. 1. And, you know, you come up to him, he's been shooting the fireballs at you throughout the castle, and you're just kind of like, you know, oh, no, whoa, whoa, and then you just kind of run in there not knowing what to do, so then you either hit the fireballs or you try to jump on him because you don't know that you're supposed to go to, like, the latch key or whatever on the back. And when you finally defeat him and you run into the toad and he tells the princess is in another castle, it's just like a big rush of emotions and feelings. 
And when he sent me this and I opened it up, and like I said to, so to a lot of people, this is not, you know, nothing in their collection. Would, they, they would not put this definitely up there. But because of the sentimental value, the memories, the nostalgia, and everything all working in one, this makes me one of my one of my favorite things in my collection and so much that I usually have it displayed right there in the back by the light and it'll always be that for me it'll always be that and because of this water grade it is forever sealed for preservation for my memory and hopefully someday his if if he still remembers it he's pretty young when he beat him but uh, I just want to thank you guys all for watching um, I know near if you're near the end of this video right now um, some of you will will know that you know, I've I officially announced a break from YouTube, and I am just finishing up this video now before I take what could be a month, two months, three months, whatever off, whatever it takes to get myself mentally back to where I need to be. Because as of right now, I'm overworked. I am spread too thin. I have so much going on with my son's graduations, and there is so much, like I said, so much going on that I want to be more present for my family instead of worrying about making a video, instead of worrying about getting on YouTube, instead of worrying about doing the stuff that I can't, you know, trying to trying to work on the stuff I can control. So I just want to say thank you guys all for being around to support me. And I got such a great response from the community because of this announcement. I was very scared that once I announced this, a lot of people were just going to jump ship and it was going to become a big deal but everybody was very supportive and it, and it makes me feel very loved and grateful for this community so thank you guys so much for the support over the years um this will be the official last up uh upload for a little while on this channel so you might see me in some collabs with other channels especially with the super retro force but this is going to be the last for now. So with that being said, guys, make sure that you go and check out all the channels that took part in this video today. Um, I'm very grateful for all these guys. I wanted to make sure that I also got a few new uh, faces to the channel that maybe you haven't seen before. So make sure you guys go check them out. And once again, just I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah, as always, stay retro, my friends. And I'll see you in the next video. God bless, guys. Thank you.